school students became young reporters learning the ropes at BBC Newcastle Studios. The students learned about green screen technology and how exactly Harry Potter disappeared. It was cool to disappear on screen, said Rebecca. Students were taken to the Lucknow set and reporters Colin Briggs joined them to answer all the questions. As Buddy and Young reporters, the studio is much smaller than you think. And there is only three cameras on set. Colin himself controls the auto cue, which he repairs really early in the day. Students agreed it was fascinating to see. From young reporters to radio presenters, the students then met Gail who explained her daily routine, starting 4 a.m. and what exactly the all the buttons do. Students then had a chance to record their own news programme, complete with sport report and weather. The students then watched the replay of the recording and saw the green screen technology and add profits behind them that weren't there when they started reading from the OQ magic. Skills were then really tested within a script was given to five students to read as a radio program. Students even had to make the sound effects from an iron board, a pillow, food some gravel and a clip fire. Strangely you may think but they were really effective and made the story really scary. The BBC Newcastle Studios are an excellent way to learn how to be a young reporter. Next generation of reporters visit Metro Radio Wednesday the 19th of August with the ambitious young writers to learn what it's like to be a famous radio presenter. At the beginning, the children went on a tour around the studios. The view from one of the meeting rooms was spectacular, state of Kyosha. While they were there, they had the privilege to meet Brian Moore, a well-heard radio presenter. During the time they had met him, they learned that time is everything and that it's not as easy as it seems. While the children were there, they realised how complex it is to run a radio station, as there is more than one computer to operate at once. I was also sure how difficult it is to organise and run just one part of the radio station. I, could, I couldn't believe that there was only 44 staff controlling this huge radio station, explained Charlie. The children were amazed to, show, amazed to hear that their most loved pop stars had been sitting in the same room as they were, including Cheryl Cole, who had started her career at Metro Radio by doing road shows. They also, they also learned that it is oh, that there's always com constant competition between different radio stations, such as Capital Smooth and BBC. The top, the tour guide told them that Metro Radio made the most of their money from advertising brands such as Nike and Sports Direct. He also told them that there's lots of that they do lots of events with the week every week. Today was awesome and I would definitely come back again someday if Daniel told us after they were finished. BCHS and our school students expressed themselves by explaining hopes and fears for September 2015. Kim Green worked with future BCHS students to, to develop their skills and work together during team activities. The students really enjoyed playing chubby bunnies with a mouthful of marshmallows, which proved you really shouldn't talk with your mouthful. We had to place a marshmallow in our mouths and say a word and the, and the group had to guess what you said. Then, then you put another marshmallow in and continued to say a word. My group won, we guessed correctly. Another activity excited students did was to play a countdown and each student worked together to pick letters and make a long word. The longest word won the points and as a nice work a challenge activities they certainly work, work together on their first day and use these skills throughout the two weeks in the school. BC here students to animals at Hoosburn on the 19th of August 2015. Fifteen students from BC here summer school took a trip to Oosburn Burn Farm. 
The day of animal magic in Green Fingers. We helped a wonderful community farm for the whole day. It was great, Charlie. Goose Bend Farm is a community farm that sends their home home to produce to members of the public. The students made their day at the farm by feeding the goats, by feeding the secret goat. As soon as they heard the students arriving the, with the buckets of feed, the animals came charging towards the fence. However, they were very gentle and they and all the students enjoyed the opportunity to to pet and store them. While well, well, while they were being hard fed, they sent farm work and their colleagues with worked with the students to plant pea seeds using recycling metal materials that are found in every home, newspapers and empty tile wall walls. We transferred into plants pots with a little bit of compost and pea seed to plant. After some imaginative gardening, the students went to herd the animals into their pens for the night. Morgan says this was quite a responsibility as we had to make sure the animals were safe while crossing the road on the way to the pens. Once the sheep and goats were safely locked up for the evening, the students were able to hold the smaller animals such as rabbits and guinea pigs. They even got to see Doris and Boris having a tortoise race. The animals were really cute and I held a rabbit called Zinky. On Wednesday the 13th of August, 20, 21 students took a step back in time at Beach World to discover history and its greatness. They learned about how people during the monastery become monks in the time of the Senthi. They looked at and the sculpture of how the monastery would have looked like and they were surprised at how well they could build in the time of Anglo-Saxons. After this time they went to the visit the part, the part of the ancient monastery which has been there for thousands of years. Once inside, the children dressed up, the children dressed up at monks, and they, they then went to the oldest part of the monastery and learned about what a monk would do during the day. After this, they walked back through the beautiful park. As soon as they got back, they went to the old Anglo-Saxon village. On the way, the children petted the farm animals, such as sheep, donkeys, and chickens. They went inside the small huts and completed different activities. There was even a stage with high steps for people to sit on. I love going to Beads World, exclaimed Megan. The teachers took lots of photos for the children so that they could all remember their brilliant day. They then walked back and had a poet using an old Anglo-Saxon song. After a long hard day, the children finally loaded onto the bus to go home. On the 11th of August, 19 reporters went to St James's Park to find out about the ground. St James's Park is the home to Newcastle United. The reporters first were shown to the very top of the stand and were told to shout Newcastle as loud as they could. I bet they could be heard for miles. From there, they were squashed into a lift to go down to the bottom. At the bottom, they were taken to the dressing rooms. All of the children were shocked at how different the home team's room was than the away's. In the away team's room, the lightning is bad, lightning is bad, and there is no way of protecting their belongings. Also, the benches are hard and uncomfortable. No one would like to sit on them for very long in comparison. The home room is posh and has 
Seek potions in a cupboard is a safe for them to store their items in. After all of this, they were taken to a room where they completed Magpie Market. Their enterprise activity first they learned how to make shirts out of paper, then they had to decorate them and sell them. After two hours of this, the winning team was announced and the group of four children were given a Newcastle United mode and pen. After a long hard day, the children were glad to go home. One of the children described it as amazing, another said it was awesome. On Friday the 14th of August, 15 BCHS students went to Chester Court Care Home to talk to elderly residents about their yesteryears and past days um, and experiences that they shared with students was valuable. Originally we were supposed to plant um, gorgeous plants in their garden but due to torrential rain we couldn't and um, the residents were really eager to answer any questions that the students had regarding their past. We learned about the surrounding towns and how much they have changed and games that they used to play and the technology that they didn't have that students take for granted today. On Monday the 17th of August we took the students up to Pegswood uh, Community Home to work with Kim Green. Uh, she worked with the students on some numeracy and literacy improving skills through games such as Countdown and Bingo and then to uh, get their brains into gear we did some brain gym activities where they had to um, think outside the box and solve some puzzles use their creative imagination to make their perfect school which they've all made some lovely models of and we're very proud of them and pleased with the efforts that they put in that day. On Wednesday the 12th, um, students came, um, came in and spent the day in school. What we did was we took some teacher resources from the BBC Schools Report uh, website and we showed the students some um, videos of how to be good, good news reporters, um, how to make stories and um, you know, how to be accurate and precise with, uh, with the new stories that they're uh, going to be writing about over the next uh, two weeks during the summer school. We also looked at um, the three C's, making sure that um, everything was, was covered. Uh, we did things like um, begin, start, middle, and the end, looked at headlines and things like that. So that was a really good day. Um, we got the students uh, in the afternoon session to actually come up with their own uh, news reports or so thinking about what they did um, the day before, sharing it with each other and then just making a little news story about that which uh, the students really enjoyed, uh, enjoyed doing. Um, and that all basically linked in um, the whole of the summer school it was all about. Uh, being BBC uh, news reporters um, and all the activities that we, we did. We took reporter notebooks with us um, and the, the children all made the notes and then um, today um, on Thursday we've just collated everything together, put some new stories together and then we've uh, compiled this DVD uh, video that's going to go onto the school website, possibly linked in with the BBC as well. But it's been a really good two week uh, summer school, and the hope now is that the students, children that have been involved in the two week summer school when we come back in September will become the BBC schools reporters for the 2015 2016 uh, academic year.